In today's Complete History Of, we've got games for the game's god, as we round up all the game's workshop titles for both the 40k and Warhammer Fantasy worlds. Because in the grim darkness of the future, there is only CVG. Our first title is HeroQuest, which came to home computers in 1991. This was a pretty faithful recreation of the board game, without the horribly painted miniatures and arguments about who got to be the Barbarian. This was followed up the next year, rather unsurprisingly, by Space Crusade. The 40k equivalent of HeroQuest, which had you stomping around an alien-infested spaceship. The trend continued the following year with Space Hulk for Amiga and PC, a gruelling fight between massively armoured Terminator Marines and endless four-armed gene stealers. Hero Quest II The Legend of Sorosil followed in 1994, an Amiga sequel to the 1991 original featuring eight characters. In 1995, we got Space Hulk Vengeance of the Blood Angels, again this was a mix of tactical manoeuvres and frantic first-person gunnery, and again it was harder than Ceramite. The first Blood Bowl game arrived on PC the same year, the brilliantly brutal Warhammer fantasy version of American football. Real-time strategy game Warhammer Shadow of the Horned Rat came to PC and PlayStation in 1995, giving us the closest thing to date to Warhammer Fantasy's epic tabletop battles. Final Liberation, a turn-based game set to the staggering scale of Warhammer 40,000 Epic, arrived on PC in 1997. More tactical warfare followed in 1998 with Warhammer Dark Omen. This was a sequel to Shadow of the Horned Rat, and once again, it more closely resembled the nuanced military tactics of the actual tabletop game. The same year we got Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate for PC. This was a strategy title which put you in charge of a squad of ultramarines, who, as everyone knows, are not as cool as the Dark Angels. More 40k stuff came in 1999 with Rights of War, another PC turn-based game centred around a Tyranid invasion. We then got a break until 2003, which gave us Fire Warrior on PC and PS2, a first-person shooter which put you in control of a Tau soldier. Things got really interesting in 2004, with the entirely brilliant Dawn of War on PC, a strategy title which perfectly captured the gothic, mechanised gloom of the 40k universe. Two expansions, Winter Assault and Dark Crusade, followed, adding more races and more campaigns. 2006 gave us Warhammer 40,000 Glory in Death for the Nokia Engage, and then we finally went back to the Warhammer Fantasy world with Battle for Atluma, a PSP adaptation of the collectible card game. The same year gave us Mark of Chaos on PC and later Xbox 360. Warhammer 40,000 Squad Command came to PSP and DS in 2007, followed by ill-fated MMO Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning in 2008. A third expansion for Dawn of War, Soulstorm, also arrived in 2008, although this wasn't developed by Relic. A year later, we got a second Blood Bowl game, released to moderate critical praise. 2009 also gave us a sequel to Dawn of War, followed by two expansions, Chaos Rising in 2010 and Retribution in 2011. Arcade shooter Kill Team also came in 2011 alongside Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine, a brutal third-person shooter that was to be THQ's final Games Workshop title. Warhammer Online Wrath of Heroes was a MOBA intended for release on PC in 2012, but it never progressed past beta. After that came Warhammer Quest, a mobile update of the excellent Games Workshop board game. Space Hulk also made a return in 2013 to horribly damning reviews. In 2014, we've had Storm of Vengeance on PC and Android, Warhammer 40k Carnage on mobile, and we've got the return of Blood Bowl on tablet devices due for release, well, today, actually. Looking ahead, there are loads of Warhammer games on the way. This year, we can look forward to the Horus Heresy Drop Assault, Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon, and Warhammer 40,000 Chess. We're also getting Warhammer 40k Space Wolf, Mordheim City of the Damned, and most excitingly of all, an untitled Warhammer fantasy game from Total War developer Creative Assembly. Looking further into the murky future, 2015 will bring us Eisenhorn Xenos, Warhammer 40,000 Eternal Crusade, Space Hulk Deathwing, and a final untitled Warhammer fantasy title developed by Rodeo Games. And in the name of the Holy Emperor of Mankind, that is your lot. Please let us know what your favourite Warhammer gaming moment was, which Space Marine chapter you follow, and how long you spent painting the miniatures. In the meantime, please check out some of our other history videos by clicking the on-screen links.